The Iowa Hawkeyes took the field against the Northwestern Wildcats Saturday as a team on a mission. Since a close loss at Michigan State three weeks earlier, they've shown tremendous improvement on both offense and defense, resulting in two consecutive convincing victories. With the winning season and the possible bowl bid on the line, they knew that anything less than a victory was simply unacceptable. Would they win their season-high third straight game, or would the Cats end Iowa's 19-game winning streak in the series? We'll find out next on Hawkeye Sports Magazine with Hayden Fry. Sponsored by Coca-Cola. Always the real thing. Walkers. Walk into Walkers. Iowa's better Buick dealers. The 175 Iowa Napa Auto Parts stores. Active Endeavors. Where your outdoor adventures begin. Bertho Fisher Company. And First Star Banks. Cyclone basketball plus. Look inside cans and you could win a Jeep Cherokee. Say, that's a great looking camera you have. Hey, you again. You know, around our house, you're known as the Nippon camera guy. Thanks. Listen, I've heard the Nippon camera's gone on to record-breaking sales. It's even been featured on a CNBC Consumer Report. The Nippon 35 millimeter gets my... Okay. So, let me guess. With the holiday season fast approaching, you're recommending the Nippon camera as a great Christmas gift, right? You bet. Call now for guaranteed Christmas. Now and you'll get 100 rolls of free Kodak film with purchase processing. The Nippon 35mm focus-free camera. And 100 rolls of free Kodak film with purchase processing. Incredibly priced at $19.95. And it makes the perfect Christmas gift. You know, you're almost as recognizable as oh, that oh, other guy oh. at Christmas. Order your Nippon camera now. Call 1-800-242-1010. That's 1-800-242-1010. Well, Coach, uh, what a great moment this is. You're one game away from a winning season, one game away from your 200 victory, one game away from a possible. There's a tremendous uh, group of young men, but we don't do anything easy. <laughs> well, you kept fighting Mac. You had the wind to fight, the overall weather to fight, a tough Northwestern team to fight. We did, Jim, and uh, we left some top players at home also, so we weren't at full strength, but uh, we had uh, several great goal line stands by our defense that only permitted field goals. We had a couple of great drives, particularly one right before the half, standing plays in the ball game, but the biggest play is the fact we won. And you won, and of course guys like Mike Wells on defense just had a tremendous game, and Burmeister once again established himself as a quarterback that's rising, and one of the top quarterbacks in the league right now. Well, I think in the last four or five games, Jim, he has, he has the best overall stats of any Big Ten quarterback. He hit 17 out of 25 in this one in a windstorm and uh, just does a great job audibleizing and the no-huddle offense, he did yeah. another super job. You gotta, you gotta love Cliff King. Well, you know, Cliff... The Windy City lived up to its name Saturday as 40 mile per hour gusts added a twist to Iowa's quest for their 20th consecutive win over Northwestern. After an exchange of punts, Iowa's offense started what looked like a good drive. Iowa quarterback Paul Burmeister hit Scott Slutsker for 25 yards, but a personal foul penalty took 15 yards away. Later in the drive, Steve Shine sacked Burmeister for a 15 yard loss, ending the threat. Later in the quarter, Northwestern made the first offensive move. 
Quarterback Steve Schnur, subbing for injured Len Williams, hit last year's Big Ten. Meister goes back, takes time. He looks, he throws. He has a man wide open at the 45, at the 50, and then knocked out of bounds at the 45-yard line of Northwestern. Anthony Dean. Hawkeyes now with the ball. First time they've been in Northwestern territory. Here's Slutsker with it. Fumble. Slutsker is hit hard, and I believe the ball pops away from him, and I think Northwestern, Northwestern may have the ball. Scott Slutsker. The turnover gave Northwestern momentum, but Larry Blue came through with a counter. Here's Schnur now, goes back to throw as all kinds of time starts to run. He's hit and is going to be dragged down by Larry Blue. Great defensive play. By the two Larry teams Blue continued a punting battle in the fierce wind into the second quarter, and Iowa's freshman Nick Gallery was superb, hitting punts of 42, 49, 68, and 59 yards. But Iowa's offense was struggling, and when the Cats added another field goal to increase their lead to 6-0, Iowa needed a big play. Wildcats leading 6-0 on two field goals. Back to throw is Schnur. Takes his time and throws downfield. Intercepted. Hawkeyes have the ball. It's at the 40. And it's Bo Porter with the ball. Still running with it. Number two. Back to the 40-yard line of Iowa. So all of a sudden, it turns around. Complete to Jasper. He's down for a going. Ryan Terry in behind blockers. Uh, oh, Rodney. Todd Bramato's point at Iowa. With the wind in their faces, Iowa put together the drive of the game. He looks. He has time. Starts to run. Now he starts to throw. And it's caught. A spectacular catch by Anthony D. It's the power eye formation, and now the second man through leaps into the end zone, and it, oh, wait a minute, a fake. The 80-yard drive took only a minute 22, and Iowa found themselves up 13-6 at the break. Coach, you were leading at halftime, but how did you feel? The ground game was still a little bit stalled uh, there. Uh, the passing game was going on against uh, the various stunts and blitzers they gave us the first half. We made some adjustments at halftime, and fortunately uh, got Cliff King as the fullback involved. But uh, you have to give credit to Northwestern. You know, they lost to Illinois when they shouldn't have, mm -hmm. to Minnesota when they shouldn't have. Right. Three points uh, uh, defeat to Michigan State last week. They should have won that game. Right. So I guess we're pretty fortunate. You are, and a great victory for the Hawkeyes in the second half just around the corner. Stay tuned. We'll have the exciting second half highlights next on Hawkeye Sports Magazine with Hayden Fry. <laughs> Tuesday, December 7th, it's Miller Genuine Draft Schedule Poster Night. Go Bull! It's the Bulls and Lakers. Walkers fits the way Iowa lives, with shoes and boots that are perfect for any occasion. For outdoor adventures, that important meeting, getting to class in style, or for evenings out. And Walkers fits the family budget with family shoe club saving. Stop by any of Walkers' 10 Iowa locations, and you'll see why Walkers is a perfect fit for you. Walk in to Walkers. What's your active endeavor? Active Endeavors offers a wide variety of apparel and accessories to outfit downtown Iowa City and University and 35th and West Des Moines. The Contemporary Iowa Advanced Technology Laboratories overlooks the scenic Iowa River on the east side of the university. Well, Coach, obviously uh, the game went right down to the wire, really, uh, because of the fact I think you should have had one or two more touchdowns, but you didn't, and Northwestern kept it close. Now going into the second half, what, what, what did you change up? Jim, we did away with a lot of the things we'd been attempting to do the first half because they weren't working, and uh, we started emphasizing a, a new blocking scheme, and uh, that turned out real good for us. Uh, defensively, uh, we'd been good and we'd been bad second half more than anything else, and I guess it did help some of the fact that we uh, gave the ball to him. <laughs> That's right. Well, Scott Slutsker had a great game, too, and uh, all, all your receivers did. You know, Scotty, bless his heart, he very seldom works out during the week. He caught seven passes for 80-something yards and another touchdown. And he, he's w really one of the best tight ends in the Big Ten. And Errol Jasper, what a game he had. Well, let's take a look at the second half right after this. The Wildcats opened the half on offense but couldn't move the sticks as Jason Olenzak stopped Dennis Lundy on third and short. Iowa's offense looked to pick up where they left off at the end of the first half. 
Only this time, their methods were vastly different. Roller for Cliff King, the fullback. He's turning out to be Iowa's main weapon on the ground, and he goes for about 15 right up the pipe. Here's Burmeister back again, a slant over the left side. Cliff King barrels his way down for another first down, going for 13 yards down to the 30-yard line. And here's Burmeister back to throw. He has a man, and it's complete to <laughs> complete to Harold Jasper. Now Burmeister fakes and hands off right up the middle this time, bulldozing his way down there. It's Cliff King. He keeps going. Going, 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 going. He's down at the five-yard line. And here's Burmeister, a quarterback keep, and dives in there, and I believe he makes it. He does make it. Burmeister dives out, and the Hawkeyes make it, and the Bumblebees Cliff King accounted for 42 of, field, of Iowa's 68 man. yards in the drive, and the Hawks took a commanding 20-6 to six lead. It was now the Hawkeye defense's turn to shine. And back to throw his snore, and he's sacked. Oh, man, they're in on top of him, right on top of him. Parker Wildeman was in there, and Lloyd Bickham, number 66, <laughs> who's having the game of his career, is in on top Iowa's defense wore down Northwestern as the third quarter continued. Larry Blue shot through the line for another sack in a later drive, but to the Wildcats' credit, they hung tough. Early in the fourth quarter, starting a drive at their own 46, Dennis Lundy went to work, running hard through the Hawks' defense. Eventually, the good running paid off. Here's a handoff, and Lundy dives down, and I believe he's in the end zone. He is. Lundy slants across left tackle, and it's a touchdown for the Northwestern Wild. Burmeister, who was closing in on a 2,000-yard passing season, continued picking the Cats apart. Oh, he takes his time. He throws. He has Slutsker, and it's complete for a first down and more inside the 15-yard line. Scott Slutsker goes for 22 yards. With the Cats clawing back into the game, Iowa needed an insurance score, but a field goal into the howling wind was no easy task. To the wind. Ball is placed down. Kick is high enough and long enough, and it is good. Well, that's a big kick. Big, big kick. Good. Iowa 23, Northwestern 13. The model's kick took the wind out of Northwestern sails. The Cats added a last-second TD, but the Hawks gave Coach Fry his 199th career win, 23-19. We wanted to get some wins going. We had the opportunities last uh, four games, and we've made the most of them the last uh, three. One, three. So um, we're pretty high. Coach, you could uh, choose a lot of different parts of the game and say they were the play of the game. But one interesting thing that really kind of uh, turned things around for you was Gallery's punt that Gissonander, I think it was, let go over his head, and it rolled and rolled and rolled, I think close to 70 yards, down to the one-yard line. You know, that was really a, a marvelous punt, Jim. Uh, the punt was into the wind, 35-mile-an-hour wind, and I'm sure that the uh, punt return man, I can't pronounce his name, Gissonander, he felt a little uneasy about catching that ball, and he got out of the way, never dreaming it was going to roll into the wind that far. The thing that uh, delighted me was the fact that our players let the ball roll and roll, and they were around it, and it just kept trickling towards the goal line, and then they finally killed it on the one-yard line. That's, the, the, the kicking game was such a big part of that game, wasn't it? Yeah, it really was. Uh, Nick Gallery, a true freshman, has become an outstanding punter, and, of course, uh, Todd Romano hit that 37-yard yeah. field goal into into the wind, so uh, uh, we, our special team did a pretty good job other than covering. Okay, 46-yard punting average, and right now let's take a look at the Napa Auto Parts play of the game. Hi. Into the air, a spiral. Northwestern signals for a fair catch, takes a Hawkeye bounce. It's rolling, it's rolling, it's rolling, it's rolling. Great kick. It'll be down on the three-yard line, the two-yard line. What a job by Gallery, and down at the one-yard Americans trust Napa for everything they need to keep their vehicles running and to help them save, too. Get Napa halogen headlights as low as $4.99. Napa's Evercraft 30-piece socket set $14.99. And the Napa Legend 75-month battery just $59.99 with exchange. So run into your nearest Napa Auto Parts store today. We keep America running. We keep America Twenty-five years old, first job, finally making some real money. Got a million ideas. Gonna be the best. Maybe even have my own company someday. Dad keeps harping. Start investing for retirement now. Retirement that's a million years away, isn't it? For new ideas about your financial future, come to First Star Bank. Main Street friendly, Wall Street smart. It's really more than just a vocabulary. Man, we've 
got a scratch for it itching. I think it's an attitude. Son, that old dog won't hunt. It's a style that's all his own. Say yes to Buick. Right now, you can say yes and get up to $750 cash back on the 1994 LeSabre. Say yes, and you'll be driving with the class of a Texas hot porch picnic. See your Iowa's better Buick dealer today. When it comes to value, Buick beats the imports hands down. It's a fact, and the public ought to know about it. Buick Skylark has standard anti-lock brakes. Toyota Corolla and Nissan Altima don't. Golly, I'm so impressed. Yet Skylark is value priced over $1,000 less than Altima, $1,500 less than Corolla. This is the most fantastic story I've ever heard. And every word of it's true, too. Get more car for your money. See your better Buick dealer today. to secure the future athletics at the University of Iowa by making a $500 contribution to the Hawkeye Horizons campaign. Hayden, it uh, sometimes takes just one guy playing great to fire a team up, doesn't it? Well, Mike Wells did it. Uh, he was being uh, uh, detained, I might call it, <laughs> on the pass rush quite a few yeah. times. He couldn't get the officials to call it. Yeah. And finally, he just blew his fuse, and as a result, uh, the entire defensive team uh, really uh, moved it to a different level, and we had a couple of goal line stands that really helped. And he had five tackles for a loss, among other things. So Mike Wells, and you got a picnic gallery, too, I think, in there, just did a tremendous job for the Hawkeyes, players of the game. Still vivid in the memories of all Iowans are the incredible pictures of the devastating flooding the state suffered during the summer of 93. It was a time when thousands of people across the state worked together to help their friends, neighbors, and even strangers who fell victim to this natural disaster. Hawkeye backup quarterback Matt Eyed, a Michigan native, organized a dozen of his fellow teammates to join the cause, putting some Hawkeye muscle to use for the United Way for those in Des Moines he had harnessed. We all felt that we wanted to give something back because we had um, some excellent support from the fans and everything, and, and it was such a disaster. And there was really nothing uh, that uh, anybody could do about it because it just happened, so uh, we wanted to come in and, and do something for some of the people. Hyde and several of his teammates busted Des Moines on a hot July morning and went to work. They helped wherever they could, spreading out and going to several different sites throughout the city. They knew it would be hard work, but the sheer devastation was something they never could have imagined. It was unreal. I mean, I, you see the, news, the stories in the news and people are suffering and stuff like that, but when you get there and, you know, you're, you're up this deep in muck, in the mud, and, you know, it, it was unbelievable. It was pure amazement. I mean, we went down in an area where I'd spent some time during the state wrestling tournament in a really nice, classy Holiday Inn, and it was totally destroyed. I mean, they had uh, water up in the second floor of the hotel, and I'd, see, I'd seen how nice the area was, and it was just total amazement for myself. These hawks spent the day hauling mud from the basement of a home that was at one time almost completely underwater. It was a job that would have taken the owner weeks to finish, but the Hawkeyes, working together with the teamwork of a last-second scoring drive, got most of the heavy work finished that day. They really liked it a lot. They really appreciated it. And, I mean, we did a lot for them. We didn't stay there that long, but I know if it would have been me, I would have wanted all the help I could, too. The, the gentleman that we helped out, his house was um, uh, probably about two feet from the ceiling um, underwater. And uh, he just appreciated the help so much because we went down there and we cleaned out his entire basin and tore up all the old carpeting and all the old drywall and, and, and pulled all the mud off. And it was, it was, um, he, was, he was really appreciated. Most of the, I mean, the guy that we helped, he was a big Hawk fan, so he really appreciated and I knew right away that he'd, <laughs> he'd like it a lot. They uh, really felt great afterwards because they really wanted to help out and some of the people were from Des Moines and uh, actually a lot of players uh, from Iowa just in general so yeah, it, was, it, was, it was a great feeling. Next we'll preview Iowa's next opponent their arch rivals the Golden Govers of Minnesota on Hawkeye Sports Magazine with Hayden. When it comes to automobiles there's only one Bob Roman. It makes sense to buy that new Honda now the 94's are on the way and prices may never be better on all remaining 93's it makes sense to buy that new Honda at Schaumburg Honda Automobiles, the largest Honda dealer in the Midwest where you always have more choices. Of course, Dale Souls, Civics, and Preludes. There's only one, Bob Rorman. It makes sense. You always save dollars at Bob Rorman's. <laughs>
When it comes to investing, everybody wants to latch on to a star. At Berthel Fisher & Company, we believe in stars too, but of a different type. We call it the five-point star program for investing, a system that's designed to balance your investment program. It might just be the star you're looking for. The five-point star program from Berthel Fisher & Company. Proud to be growing in the Midwest by investing in the Midwest. Call for a free brochure. Here's a look at the latest Big Ten standings, brought to you by your Iowa Better Buick dealers. Well, Hayden, the race for all the postseason bowl uh, rewards still up in the air, still a jumble with about three or four teams really involved heavily in it. You know, Jim, I think this is the greatest thing that's ever happened in college football, the parity that we see in all the different conferences. A lot of the conferences in the coalition are not going to have uh, eligible members for the bowl games because they have to win a minimum of six games against Division I opponents, and some of those people can't do it. And you uh, could be right back in that bowl picture again, couldn't you? Keep thinking that way, Jim. <laughs> <laughs> well, Minnesota will have something to say about that. And, of course, Michigan and Ohio State go at it. Illinois plays Wisconsin. And then with, uh, Wisconsin has to play Michigan State, so a lot yet to be decided. Well, that's true. And, uh, you know, uh, certainly Michigan is capable of beating Ohio State. And if the Badgers could defeat both Illinois and Michigan State, uh, who knows? Who knows? Well, we know this, that uh, the Hawkeyes are going to be playing a Minnesota team that's given them fits the last couple of years. Let's take a look at the Gophers. In the last four years, Floyd of Rosedale, the mighty bronze and pig awarded to the winner of the Iowa-Minnesota game, has become real familiar with Minneapolis, vacationing there three times. In fact, in 1989 and last year, Floyd's trips north may have cost the Hawks Christmas vacation in the South. What's Minnesota's secret to success against the Hawkeyes? Uh, uh, who in the world knows? Uh, you know, it was the last game of the season. I think they were playing for a bowl game. They were maybe a little bit uptight. Uh, and then we had a young sophomore quarterback come in that had a heck of a day and hit a couple big ones out. Them, you know, so, uh, you know, thank goodness. I mean, nobody needed a win worse than we did at that point, real frankly. And uh, by the same token, uh, to get a win against Iowa, it is our most traditional rival. Uh, that was a big, big win for our football program. This year, the Gophers have had a lot of big wins, and the secret is an explosive offense. We are committed to the pass. We're mainly one back, you know, uh, no back, and uh, we're going to throw it all over the field. It's going to be a fun, fun offense for the fans. You know, a potent and lethal attack where we can score at almost any given play. With a pure passer at quarterback and the league's leading receivers, the Gophers have scored at will against many opponents, including a 59-point performance against Purdue. Next Saturday's classic battle for the Pigs should be a crowd pleaser, the Big Ten's best pass offense versus Iowa's number one pass defense. Well, Coach, you want to talk about the Gophers, but first let's talk about that big cruise you got coming up in February. I know you're looking forward to that, and uh, you can uh, send your postcards and enter the contest, maybe win a trip with Hayden Fry. Get a chance to go on that wonderful cruise, and we also want to remind you every Thursday night, Hayden and I do what we'll call the Hayden Fry Call-In Show, sponsored in part by Napa Auto Parts. Uh, it's on stations all over the state of Iowa, down in Texas, and all over the place. Now, Floyd of Rosedale needs to be in a place that's warmer. He needs to be <laughs> back right here. Can you get him back? Uh, well, we're going to need the help of all of our fans. You know, they uh, they could be very vocal in the ball game uh, this coming Saturday against the Gophers, and. Uh, uh, certainly that's what happens up in the dome. Uh, we get to holler so loud up there that it ricochets off the walls, and then we get penalized. <laughs> well, last time you're not playing up there, you're playing at Kinnick Stadium, right. and uh, you're very, very tough here at Kinnick Stadium, and you have the incentive of, you know, I know you don't like to talk about bowls, but you really do have the incentive of winning season, your 200th victory, and a possible bowl. Well, we do, Jim. That, that's correct. Uh, our uh, players are very aware of that. Uh, they so much want to go out as winners, particularly the seniors. And, uh, of course, if we do uh, win the game against Minnesota, there is an opportunity. Uh, I don't know how good it is, but uh, we've been contacted uh, by quite a few people that want to know if we're interested. And, <laughs> of course, we uh, look them straight in the face and say, sure. <laughs> <laughs> well, what about the Gophers this year? And, and what about their strange hex they've kind of had on Iowa? Well, you know, I started way back before I arrived on the scene, and uh, evidently when Iowa and Iowa State were not playing one another, then the Minnesota-Iowa game became right. the big deal. And uh, frankly, a lot of the players that we have in here from across the nation don't understand the importance of, of Floyd or Rosedale. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, we've got to do a heck of a selling job this week to get them ready because the Minnesota 
uh, has a fine football team. They, they didn't play well against Michigan, but they do have a fine football now team. they got a great passing attack particularly, don't they? Super passing attack. They are leading the Big Ten hands down throwing the football. Oh, now, big question. How healthy are you going to be for your final game of the regular season? Uh, Jim will be healthier than the game we just played with Northwestern and uh, certainly uh, hopeful of having Maurier Crane and Kent Call and uh, uh, possibly Matt Russell. Uh, I don't think Greg Allen will make it back, but we'll be healthier. Well, Coach, good luck to you. Great victory, and let's go get the Gophers. Thank you. No team they'd rather beat. We'll be back next week with more Hayden Fry.